if you've finished uh, kind of hitting on the interest rate issue, let's touch on inflation. Yeah, so the interest rate issue and inflation, they're married together because the Federal Reserve has uh, their mandate is full unemployment and stable prices. Um, so you, stable prices is just the same way of saying stable inflation. Um, so they're, they're married together. If we're going to have prolonged extended periods of inflation, you're going to have higher interest rates, um, which I read in the I read in the Wall Street Journal, just for some context, uh, it, with the May report of inflation CPI that it, it you know, analyzed it to about 5% um, inflation rate, it indicated the prior three months annualized was something more like 9, 9.5% or something like that as an inflation rate. But it also gave the context that if we look at that May report and compare it not to one year ago, but two years ago, it was only about a two and a half percent annualized rate of inflation. So much less dramatic in its appearance if we give it a little bit more context. I just thought that was helpful uh, perspective. Yeah, and that's exactly what I was going to say. So if you go back to April of 2019 and you compare it to April of 2021, it's about 2.45 percent. Um, the Federal Reserve has told us that for 2021, they expect about three and a half percent inflation. Um, and they expect it to come back down to their target of, of 2% in time. Um, they've told us that they expect it to, they, they are okay with inflation running a little hot for a little while. Um, and, I, and I think that's understandable considering that we ran under the 2% mark for, for quite some time. Uh, the, the, so what, uh, is, what does a little hot mean then, you know, for context? Is that, how should investors interpret that? And I, I think we've been telling our clientele, you know, you're going to hear a lot about this. Don't get overly worked up about it just yet. We have to wait and see how this really materializes. But what's what's that translate to? And like, what should I be looking for? Okay, so I think it's, you know, people love to, I, I want to put time frames into perspective, right? So, yeah. you know, people like to point out the hyperinflation in the 1970s. Right. Uh, that there we were we were looking in February of seventy five we were looking at uh, core PCE of ten point two percent we were looking at in, in January of eighty one we were looking at a uh, uh, core PCE of uh, nine point seven six percent so you know if we're going to talk about inflation at three to four percent which is what we're going to be in twenty twenty one according to the Federal Reserve in less than that um, making its way down to two percent in time uh, that is uh, not too far different. different. Far uh, different. Far, far different. I mean, yeah, it's it's not it's not really comparable. Now, at, at the same time, you know, there's there are some benefits to inflation. Um, typically, people make higher wages when there's inflation. Um, now, they don't necessarily feel the effect, the full effect of those uh, wages, since they're paying higher prices, and they often feel behaviorally that they've earned the higher wage, but they haven't actually, but they're being punished by paying higher um, prices for everything else, even though they're all kind of interrelated. Um, so there is a psych psychological dynamic to it, um, which I totally understand. But we've been in a disinflationary or deflationary environment for, for a long time where prices have been very, very stagnant. And that's actually been an issue. This is one of the reasons why the Federal Reserve hasn't been able to raise rates higher. Um, because uh, without any inflation, once real rates get pretty significant, um, you know the, the the economy can't can't really sustain it. So one of the one of the good things about inflation is it could actually raise the natural rate, um, natural interest rate in the economy, which which could be arguably a good thing. The other good thing is if you hold a lot of debt and you fixed rate debt. So let's say you have a thirty year fixed rate mortgage and your wage goes up five percent because the inflation of the economy as a whole. You're effectively paying less for your mortgage, right? So um, debt, fixed rate debt, often goes away. So a lot of people who are concerned about the national debt, this is a good way to actually roll down the national debt um, is is by inflating it away. Um, so those are a couple of good things about inflation. Um, there are obvious bad things that we're all all familiar with, but um, you know, as long as it's a, a reasonable, reasonably high amount, a predictably high amount. Um, where we don't see, um, you know, interest rates skyrocket, uh, you know, unexpectedly. I think I think we're in good shape. Now, I do want to say that that is a risk. So, the federal government borrowing excessive amounts of money uh, means that we need to issue a lot of treasury securities, 
and the world needs to basically buy up all those treasury securities. So we got to hope with our excess savings that Americans are buying up the excess savings, but we also need to hope that foreigners buy up the excess savings. Otherwise, the Federal Reserve needs to buy up the, the, uh, the excess issuance, I mean, and uh, that could be a bad thing. So if the, if the Federal Reserve essentially can never taper um, off their, off their uh, you know, if they can never raise rates because they can never taper, that, that could be very negative for the dollar. But I don't think that's a risk right now.